Hey friends out there in YouTube land, Robert Ham here with Robert Ham Photography. Today I want to share with you my story, my horror story, of updating the Surface Pro 4 with the new cumulative update for December 2012. That's 1709-12. And if you're really interested in that kind of stuff, stick around. It's going to be fun. We're going to do about five minutes. For those of you that are new here, sometimes these videos uh, attract people that are not regulars to the channel. I want to welcome you and say thanks for stopping by and watching. Guys, if you don't know, I'm a photographer. I'm a wedding photographer, so I make wedding videos. I make wedding, uh, you know, photos, portraiture, stuff like that. And so that's what I do, and my channel is about that. It's very photography-related because that's exactly <laughs> what it is. Um, I'm also designing a camera right now. We plan to launch this on Kickstarter here in just a couple weeks. January 15th is the fuzzy start time. Just uh, between the 15th and the 20th is when it's going to kick off. Uh, if you couldn't tell... We are already done with prototyping. We're ready. We've got tested cameras ready to go. Kickstarter is going to fund the actual beginning of the brand. That's what it's all about. So I'm looking forward to a good launch. It's important to know that I do all of my work on the Surface Pro 4, okay? That's that's really important to know. This this device right here, the Surface Pro 3, when Microsoft came out with it, really attracted me. So I went and picked it up. I'd been using a 2012 MacBook Pro with the Retina display. This is uh, the internal graphics and all that stuff. I was I was ready for some powerhouse. This was it. And in 2015, when the Surface Pro 3 came out, I thought, man, that's what I'm looking for. And it was great. Clients loved it. Made work easy. Yada, yada, yada. Surface Pro 4 was great for me now. And it does everything I want to do, including editing videos in Premiere. Great. So smaller, lighter, different form factor. But it died. It died during an update. Now, I've never had that happen before. This is a bit of a rant, but it's kind of also an explanation of what happened. And on the 2nd of December, I started noticing the Surface Pro 4 was downloading a lot. Okay, when I went and checked the task manager, I could see that back in the background, Windows Update service was running, so I knew something was coming. Plus, I had... Uh, I did know that the creator's update was coming out, or not the creator's update, the cumulative update was coming out. So I figured that's what it was doing. But I noticed I started getting low disk space warnings, right? I'm like, what the hell? Like, I had 70, 80 gigs free at the time. So you make a little less space, and then you come back the next day, and it says low disk space. And then I get an error for install. I'm like, what's trying to install? The install should have only hit around December 12th, but I guess if it downloads early, it'll attempt to update. But mine started trying to update prior to the actual... Uh, cumulative updates regular release which was around the 12th and um, I started getting these warnings so I'd delete stuff and I'd get a more low disk space warning and finally uh, that went on for a couple days uh, that I just decided man I'm gonna restart everything and when I did I got stuck in this restart loop where I got the gray screen that says Windows is preparing please do not turn off your computer now the first time this happened to me I'm the type of guy I like to let Windows do its thing it's gonna update fine Go update. I'm going to get a cup of coffee. So I come back 30 minutes later and it's still updating. Okay, fine. All right, I can, whatever. Uh, this is interrupting my workflow, but fine. It's doing whatever. Um, so I let it go overnight in that case. You know, it was evening time, let it go overnight. I come back the next morning, the computer's hot, the fans are spinning. It's been about 24 hours or 18 to 24 hours. And I'm tempted to turn it off, but I let it go. By the time we really hit the 24-hour mark, which was about evening to the next evening, I decided, no, I'm not going to do this. Microsoft, what are you doing? Why is my, why are my fans spinning like this? Right? Why is my CPU processing? That's 24 hours of just constant 100% use is not good. A laptop hot for 24 hours straight, that's not good on your electronics. It reduces the lifetime of the product. It's not good. Electronics and heat and don't work very well. Not for these kind of prolonged periods of time. Uh, and so that really made me mad. So I turned it off, got to the EFI screen and rebooted. I tried to refresh the computer a couple times. You know, keep all your files intact, just refresh. But I went through the same things. I then decided it was time to move all my files off. I had some clone drives, but I decided to move them off physically. And then uh, reboot the computer and reinstall Windows from the, the security and update screen. You know, And so it gave me a fresh copy of Windows. And so... Then next thing I know, it tells me Windows is preparing to update, and then it gets into this update loop again. Now, when I had the free version, or the just redone version, or whatever, rebooted version, there were over 100 gigs. There's 200 gigs, 205 gigs on the hard drive that were available. And over a 24-hour period, the Windows update sucked all of the life out of that gigs of, of hard drive space. It updated a couple hundred gigs worth of updates because my hard drive, with nothing on it from a fresh system, went from having 205 gigs free to zero low warnings again so finally this time i restarted the computer when i turned it back on 
with a fresh system of Windows installed on it. I turned off all of the updates. I wouldn't allow it to do that, and I uninstalled the updates manually, downloaded and installed them. I then went ahead and, uh, uh, you know, just let it sit for a couple days. And that's where we're at now. It's been 72 hours. It's been sitting, right? And uh, it seems to have worked fine. I, but I, I did tell it not to give me the, uh, the fast track windows. I told it to give me the general release windows candidate, uh, which is important. So I'm not on the quick ring anymore. Fine. And here we are. So what happened? Uh, about halfway through the process, uh, I did tweet on Twitter that I was going through some problems and Microsoft Helps did get in touch with me. Uh, but I told him, what you, I'm already in the middle of it. I'm, I've already now wiped my system and I'm installing manually. Thanks a lot. You know, it would have been more helpful not to have had the problem in the first place. Now, I understand these things happen and it's kind of a one-off. I just want to give you an idea. That's never happened on my Mac. Now, I've been using Mac since 2001 to 2015 when I pretty much switched back to Windows. Um, but during that time, I never had a period of time where the Mac was, was bricked in some kind of cycle like this. I understand recently with High Sierra, there were some problems with, with some updates on older Macs, particularly the... Uh, the 2012 model, I understand that there's been some things that Apple's been doing ever since Steve's passed with updates. Maybe they're getting a little lax. I don't know. I've been using Microsoft Surface Pro 4 or Surface Pro 3, and I'm still going to continue to use it. It's still my preferred product in order to generate and create. It's my preferred way to interact with my guests. It's nothing as cool as showing up with a Surface, man, and then having people just look, touch, swipe, see the photos, watch the videos, sign the contracts, do the whole thing right here. That's awesome. There's nothing as cool as sitting in a Starbucks designing the ham camera on the Surface Pro 4 or the Surface Pro or whatever new one that come out. This device works great. So I'm not switching, but on it. Man, it wouldn't take a lot more of two weeks of lost productivity like this for me to reconsider what I'm doing. Especially if Apple can figure out how to give us a daggone touch screen. God, come on, guys. Come on. That's my rant. I hope that you found it helpful. Guys, I'm Robert Hamm with Robert Hamm Photography. I want to thank you for stopping by. If you see what you like, go ahead and hit a subscribe. I want to remind you I'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks for watching.